Hey, everybody. So before we dive into this particular research paper, I want to mention and put a disclaimer that I'm not talking about this research paper here today because I'm endorsing this research paper or I agree with the um, fu fundamental arguments within it. I don't disagree with these arguments and I don't like disendorse this paper, but I don't know if I agree 100% with this paper. Um, but this is a very interesting paper to talk about, and there's a lot of implications and ramifications and underlying discussion regarding this paper that I think is very important to talk about. So this paper is called Consciousness as a Jamming Phase, and it's put out by one singular author, right? And then it's, uh, and then Department of Mathematics, University of Science and Technology of China. If this paper were put out uh, by like a, a European institution, an American institution, et cetera, I'd ignore it because it's one author. Uh, and then uh, it's like I've seen uh, there's a lot of papers like this. You'll see them like um, maybe published like uh, in like like uh, just one random person, right? Because like in, in America and Europe, like anyone has access to ARCHIV. Like I could publish a paper to ARCHIV like this, right? And it, it's common. Like you'll see it. Like people will will write like their their manifestos and then, like. Uh, again, I, I ignore them to, like, anytime where it's like that, that one singular author, and then especially when it's like on the consciousness or something like that, I, I just say flat out ignore it, right? Because it's, it's their manifesto, <laughs> like, is, is uh, typically what it is, right? But the fact that this is put out by this institution in China is uh, more significant to me overall, because in order for any paper to get published onto Archive, it has to have and go through some level of CCP scrutiny. That's just how the, it works overall. And then so uh, within that and, and that scrutiny, like I don't I don't know how exactly it works. Right. Like, But but uh, what I do know within that is, is that like there's uh, like tiers of it. Right. And then especially like if it's a sensitive sub subject, then it, it's subject to higher scrutiny. Uh, and, and just inherently based off of the subject, right? Um, and then uh, it's just my my core assumption <laughs> that, that this is uh, in that the consciousness is within that uh, realm of like uh, scrutinous discussions. I, I've seen it like uh, I haven't seen a paper come out from China with this particular stance, right? Uh, I've seen arguments from China around this and 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 like so I I know what the stance is around this right and there's a differentiation that's what I want to highly talk about so this paper and and overall like my overall uh what I have seen and and kind of my what I observe within this is that uh the large stance within China is overall is is that uh consciousness overall is more of a physical phenomenon and that's very much what this paper argues right so breaking down what what this paper argues fundamentally and, and simplistically uh is is that there's a um, type of physics called jamming physics which is like uh it's related to phase transitions so like uh transitions from uh like a liquid to a solid would be jamming physics uh and then within that that those Thermodynamic principles are the guiding force behind uh, AI and like what makes AI work, which like I 100% I agree with that, right? which is like why another reason why this paper caught my attention, because with regards towards that underlying principle, like like I'm, I'm in 100% agreement that this underlying principle exists, that it's down to thermodynamic principles and thermodynamic principles are what makes AI work overall. And then there's secondary claim within this and, and kind of the, the, the more important claim is, is that so when you take that thermodynamic aspect and then you take scaling laws within AI, if you treat uh, AI overall, like neural networks, LM models as like a, a neural jamming, that like they have, if you treat that they have a neural jamming phase that essentially operates like physics jamming, uh, then they essentially can equate for and uh, fully like incorporate and solve for exactly how and why neural network scaling works. And then so uh, essentially there are three main contributions are that we developed a neural germ jamming phase diagram with three control parameters that unifies observed scaling laws in AI with established jamming physics. So they're able to, to say, here's exactly why scaling laws happen, why they occur, and then here's the, the unification, the full unification within physics. 
Two, we demonstrate how computational cooling, density optimization, and noise reduction drive systems towards a critical service where consciousness emerges. And then three, we establish qualitative con connections between jamming exponents and neural scaling laws providing testable predictions for intelligence thresholds. It's, um, Easiest way to, to read this and, and, and like uh, to make their, their full argument is just to go to the conclusion here, right? And then so let's do that. And then I'll, I'll like, let's go to the conclusion. And, and then there's one other thing that I want to, to discuss going back up with this. But so conclusions and discussions. We've discussed, we've developed a neural gemming framework that interprets consciousness in large language models as an emergent critical phenomenon. By identifying three control parameters, computational temperature, volume fraction, and a training stress, that's training stress is the, the, the big one that they're adding, we establish direct connections between jamming physics and neural scaling laws. The theory explains how increasing computational budgets drive pooling, while optimal model data balancing achieves critical density for consciousness emergence. Remarkably, the same thermodynamic principles governing granular jamming appear to underlie intelligence, emergence, and neural networks evidenced by shared feature like isostatic, isostatic conditions and divergent correlation links. The, this physical perspective not only provides testable predictions for consciousness thresholds, but also offers a practical guidance for model scaling. The framework suggests that consciousness fundamentally represents a self-organized critical state where local interactions generate global coherence, opening new avenues for understanding intelligence through statistical physics. Future work should focus on quantifying the exact mapping between jamming physics and neural scaling laws, as well as experimentally verifying criticality signatures in large language models. So uh, there it is in, in a nutshell, right? So they're just establishing like here's the full physical link between uh, like and solving for like the the physics uh, the physics that exists and the scaling laws, and then within that full link that exists that we solve for what the the authors of this paper are stating is that we prove that there's a uh, a, a transition phase that models go through that is similar to gemming physics, and then they equate it to physical consciousness. And that 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 um, physical transition phase, like that, just phase transitions, is essentially like the the physicality of consciousness, like the physical root of consciousness. So, uh, interesting thing again to to going back up to that prior discussion around this with regards towards the whole like um, fact that this paper comes out of China has been scrutinized, et cetera, right? So a few things that I know off the top within this is, so this is the Department of Mathematics and it's put out by someone that has a PhD in mathematics, like slide out. And then there, this paper is uh, lacking in mathematics overall compared to any paper that, that, that uh, typically comes out within this. Uh, there's some, some, some math, right? And then, uh, but a hundred percent of the math within this paper is all dealing, like it, it's all like just proving out like their, their, uh, assumption right like and it's uh, like uh nothing like nothing at all outside of that like usually like you'll have like uh here's like our um, you know like theory one three two three three that leads up to like theory four which is like what this would be uh, and then they prove it out and then you've got a huge uh like uh appendix at the end after uh, like after all of the citations there's nothing here at the end like uh Bottom line to me is like 100%. I can like this paper has been ripped apart. <laughs> like, uh, it, it's like exactly what it shows to me. Like, this is not the paper that someone that has a PhD in mathematics would produce having gone over these papers like all of the time, every single day, and, and going through them, seeing how, like, how exactly people with PhDs in mathematics on a daily basis talk about mathematics. This paper is very lacking in the mathematics aspect, which means it's been stripped. Like it's just uh, how it is overall. But so I just highlighting that, right? But like to me, those arguments again go into the core argument that I'm making within this, which is that like if uh, consciousness as a physicality and it is a physicality component were not a um, at least on the radar of like the CCP and as being like um, a way forward, this paper wouldn't come up. like, and that's the bottom line that I want to get in within this paper. And then so uh, within this discussion here, and then let's dissect that further, right? Because so currently right now, what you see is a huge uh, divide between like um, Western companies and talent and uh, 
Chinese companies and talent when it comes to AI, right? And then what you'll see is a uh, uh, Western company A will release some model, release some research, and then Chinese company A out of nowhere will just be able to to recreate, reproduce, uh, beat that research overall, <laughs> like and, and very easily with less resources overall, right? Uh, the only major huge difference in that equation is how people look at this equation overall like and i can't I, I highlight this a lot and i'm just highlighting it again in this video right because it's i mean it's the only prominent factor and differentiating factor that is within this is how exactly uh the two different cultures go about this particular question and and dealing with this overall like and then so within uh all of the, the Chinese research that I've seen for like the last three years, like an overwhelming amount, like none of them make this specific argument, but that they'll, they'll like, it is known that, uh, like the CCP favors, uh, consciousness as a physicality. Like I can, I, well, I can 100% say I, I have seen that overall and like over and over again in the research that comes out of it. Right. And then, so within that, uh, Tencent, Alibaba, et cetera, they're operating and they're researching, based off of this same approach. Uh, and then so on in the West, it's very much that you don't operate under that assumption, right? Uh, and then I'll, I'll state it like, so like um, I often come up with different arguments and, and different um, ways of looking at things than other people who look at these things are able to do it, right? And then so uh, how do I do that? I leave this open as a question. I don't like block this off. I don't think that this is like, I don't like, I don't claim to know anything about anything. <laughs> That's kind of the overall framework. <laughs> is consciousness a physical phenomenon? I have no idea. Like, uh, I'm not going to discount that it is, and I'm not going to discount that it's not, right? I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to operate. Uh, if I do an experiment around it, I'm going to experiment both ways and then see how it comes out and then play the data from there, right? And then do that. And then in all of my experiments that I've come out, my assumption, my, if I had to lean one way or the other, I assume that consciousness is a physical process. Why do I assume that? Because the research comes out better when you do it that way. It's just how it is, right? I don't dictate the end result of the research. I go based off of just the pure results of it. Pure results of it, in my opinion, speak for themselves. There's a, like a, people can't figure out how exactly these companies are doing it. What is their unique sauce? What are these companies doing differently than the Western companies? They're just approaching it from a different mindset and a mindset that is honestly very hostile to take for whatever reasons uh, in the Western environment. It just is, right? Like it's very, like anyone that like takes like this same stance is ripped apart, ripped to pieces, like up and down. Like uh, it just, I mean, how it is, I don't do it, right? But that's, that's just the, like, uh, general uh, reality of, of how that equation breaks down, right? Like, uh, I'm not the one responsible for that equation overall. I just happen to to uh, observe it and see that particular pattern play out, and it 100% plays out, like without question. Uh, and then I think again, like if you look at all of the variables, the only big variable that is different in this equation is with regards towards this question. And then um, it does actually make a huge difference when you start researching and you go into these things because it, like, uh, it shapes your assumptions. Like, uh, like the, the simplest way that I can break this down, and this is just my personal opinion on this, just my personal observation on this. When you start examining physics and you dive deep into like physics like quantum physics large physics th theoretical physics things like that there's uh you always have to to make a choice <laughs> like uh and there's a a general choice that has to be made within uh, your worldview when it comes to questioning physics and and some of these things within physics uh, i think personally that 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 unique choice that you have to make is kind of built into it and a purpose of it but uh it, it like it's an inescapable choice uh either you think that uh, there's meaning to the universe or there's not it's kind of the overall way to break that down like just flat out right um and then there like, when you dive deep like deep into the theory of the, there's there's two crystal clear roads that emerge 
based off of that question. Like if you think that universe has no meaning, there's a, a very clear and straightforward path for you. Like it's, and, and I mean, it, Stephen Hawking, you can go through and, and like make a lot of like, uh, everything is boils down to like Hawking radiation, things like that. Like, and, and you can, um, make physical sense of, of, of that road. And that, that road clearly exists and it, and it lines up bright, right? Uh, if you take the exact opposite mindset that there's a meaning to the universe, uh, and then you go through, uh, it, then a hundred percent different road lights up that, um, the quantum mechanics, uh, Schrodinger, like it, there's a different, I mean, it's just, it's literally two paths like that, that just, they light themselves up, uh, along that physics track. Um, and then, so, uh, that decision overall, like this decision as to whether or not you think that this is garbage or not has massive ramifications when it comes to physics overall. And it's just the bottom line. Uh, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you much.